Marie-Julie Jaheny was a French mystic and visionary who lived in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Born on February 12, 1850, in Coyoli, Brittany, she was the eldest of five children. Her family, though poor, was deeply pious. From a young age, Marie-Julie demonstrated a profound spirituality, often spending long hours in prayer. This devoutness would later define her extraordinary life, as she was believed to receive several divine revelations, including prophecies of future events, some of which are said to have already come to pass, while others remain yet to be fulfilled. Marie-Julie's prophecies primarily focused on France, but they also extended to the entire world. Her visions often revolved around catastrophic events, natural disasters, and divine punishment for the sins of mankind. According to her predictions, France would be the first nation to suffer, followed by the rest of the world. This is because France was, as she claimed, the first country to embrace Catholicism and was given a special mission to defend the Church. But its failure to uphold this mission would lead to severe consequences. Her prophecies included chilling descriptions of events such as unprecedented earthquakes, hurricanes, crop failures, plagues, and wars. One of the most alarming predictions made by Marie-Julie was about the coming of three days of darkness. She foretold that during these three days, the world would be plunged into absolute darkness and the forces of evil would be unleashed. People were warned not to look outside or open their windows during this period, as doing so would result in immediate death. Only blessed candles would provide light, and the faithful were advised to gather around these candles with a crucifix and images of Jesus to protect themselves from the terror outside. During this time, the earth would shake violently, the seas would rise, and many would perish. Yet Marie-Julie assured that this would not be the end of the world, but rather a time of purification. Following these events, a holy reign would begin, led by a divine king who would restore peace and faith on earth. In addition to her predictions about natural disasters and apocalyptic events, Marie-Julie also spoke of the importance of the church and its role in the world's salvation. She was deeply concerned about the state of the church and often warned about the rise of heresies and the corruption within its ranks. Her prophecies indicated that the church would face great trials and betrayals, but would ultimately triumph. She also emphasized the need for repentance and penance, urging people to return to a simpler, more devout way of life. Marie-Julie's visions were not limited to warnings of doom and destruction. She also spoke of hope and redemption. After the Great Tribulations, she believed that a new era would begin, one in which humanity would be profoundly awakened and would return to a life of simplicity and faith. The barriers between different denominations would be removed and all people would unite under God. This era of peace would be marked by a return to true devotion and the restoration of the Church's glory. One of the most controversial aspects of Marie-Julie's prophecies is her prediction regarding the 2024 Paris Olympics. According to her, the events surrounding the Olympics would be filled with offenses against God, which would provoke divine punishment. This prediction, made more than a century ago, has gained attention in recent times, as some believe that the symbolism and imagery used during the Olympic ceremonies were indeed blasphemous. The depiction of a headless goddess with broken wings and the reenactment of the Last Supper with scantily clad performers were seen by many as blatant disrespect to Christian beliefs. For those familiar with Marie-Julie's prophecies, these acts were a clear indication that her warnings were being fulfilled. But despite the dire nature of her prophecies, Marie-Julie also offered hope. She spoke of a time after the chastisements when a holy king would arise and bring about a divine reign on earth. This king, she believed, would unite the world under God's rule and the faithful would be rewarded for their perseverance. The trials that humanity would endure while severe would ultimately lead to a period of peace and spiritual awakening. Marie Julie's life was marked not only by her prophecies, but also by miraculous phenomena. She was said to have received the stigmata, the wounds of Christ, on her body. These wounds, which appeared on her hands, feet, side, and head, bled regularly, particularly on Fridays and during the liturgical seasons of Lent and Good Friday. Witnesses reported that her stigmata were accompanied by intense suffering, which Marie-Julie offered up for the salvation of souls. 
In addition to the stigmata, she experienced other mystical phenomena, such as the odor of sanctity, a fragrant smell that emanated from her body and surroundings. Throughout her life, Marie Julie remained devoted to her faith, offering her sufferings for the reparation of sins and the salvation of souls. She entered the Third Order of St. Francis and dedicated her life to prayer, penance, and service to others. Despite her physical ailments, she continued to receive visions and prophecies until her death on March 4, 1941. One of the mysteries surrounding Marie Julie's death is the fact that she had previously predicted she would die on a Friday, but she passed away on a Tuesday. This discrepancy has led some to speculate that her death may have been a mystic event, possibly involving a death-like coma or a hidden death unknown to those around her. Whatever the case may be, her legacy as a mystic and visionary continues to inspire and intrigue those who study her life and prophecies. Marie Julie's predictions about the future have not gone unnoticed. Many of her prophecies, particularly those related to natural disasters and political upheavals, have come to pass. She accurately predicted events such as the eruption of Mount Paley in Martinique, the Kulturkampf in Germany, and the outbreak of both World War I and World War II. Her prophecies about the future, including the reign of a holy king and the restoration of the church, continue to captivate the imagination of believers and scholars alike. Despite the skepticism that often surrounds claims of prophecy, Marie Julie's life was filled with extraordinary events that defy simple explanation. Her stigmata, miraculous healings, and accurate predictions have led many to believe that she was indeed chosen by God to deliver a message to the world. While some of her prophecies remain unfulfilled, the accuracy of those that have already come to pass lends credibility to her other predictions. One of the most difficult trials was when the devil tried to deceive her by appearing as angels or saints. He would disguise himself, but Marie Julie was cautious. She always made sure to test the visions she saw. To do this, she would ask the apparitions to make an act of love to the Sacred Heart. This was her way of checking if the vision was from heaven. If the apparition was from God, it would comply with her request. But if it was the devil in disguise, he would not be able to fulfill her request and would suddenly disappear. The devil was clever, and he tried different ways to trick her. He would appear as a saint, but Marie Julie noticed that something was always off. For example, if the devil came as a saint, the halo would be missing its bright light, or the cross on his clothes would be bent or twisted. These small details helped her see through his disguise. Despite these attempts to trick her, she remained strong and careful in testing the visions. There were also times when the devil would steal things from her. After a particularly tough period, St. Michael, an angel, came to her and returned all the items the devil had taken. This brought her peace for a while, but in January 1875, the devil started tormenting her again. This time, he appeared as a priest to fool her. The devil wanted to give her a host while in this form, but Marie Julie knew something was wrong. She noticed that the priest was missing a cross on his stole, a key sign that he was not a real priest. She refused to take the host, knowing the devil was trying to deceive her. The devil also tried to poison her on many occasions. Once, he forced a phial of poisoned blood into her mouth and clamped it shut. She could only open her mouth after her spiritual director, Faulkner David, said a special exorcism prayer over her. At other times, the devil would try to prevent her from receiving Holy Communion. But Father David was patient and would stand there with the Blessed Sacrament until the devil was forced to release her. These attacks, though painful and frightening, became an additional way for her to offer sacrifices for the salvation of others. Marie Julie had another method to get rid of the devil. Sometimes she could make him disappear by sprinkling holy water. Her spiritual experiences, called ecstasies, happened often. During these times, she was in a deep supernatural state where her normal senses were inactive. Even if someone pricked her with needles or burned her, she would not react. She was also able to tell the difference between objects that were blessed and those that were not. For example, if someone placed a blessed object in front of her, she would kiss it with great reverence. But if the object was unblessed, she would refuse to kiss it. 
There was a notable event during an ecstasy on October 18, 1877. During this experience, she was going through the steps of the Way of the Cross. At one point, she asked for a picture of St. Francis. A visiting priest had one in his breviary and handed it to her, but she remained motionless. So, that's it for today's episode. Don't forget to give this video a like and also smash that subscribe button while you're down there.